The FMA IA58 Pucara represents a significant milestone not just for Argentina but for the entire region. It was the first combat aircraft designed and produced on a large scale in Latin America. However, due to its combat experiences in the Falklands War, very few consider this warbird successful. Today we're investigating the IA58 Pucara, a brilliant but unlucky initiative of the Argentine aviation industry. The IA-58 was a turning point in the Argentine aviation industry in the 1960s. Although the country had achieved many noteworthy successes in this field since the late 1920s, the Pucara symbolized a new level. Many viewers might naturally disagree with our definition, the first combat aircraft designed and produced on a large scale in Latin America. So, to better express ourselves, we should first mention the history of the Argentine aviation industry. Founded on October 10, 1927, Instituto Aerotecnico started the business by the licensed production of the Avro 504K Gosport biplane basic trainer. This Argentine company also developed many civilian and military aircraft. The most notable was the IEC-2. Over 100 pieces in different variants were produced, yet it was not a combat aircraft. Instituto Aerotecnico had also developed the IEMB-2 bombers but manufactured only 15 pieces, including the prototype. During the Second World War, the company focused on licensed production works but also developed some local civilian and military planes. Yet again, none of them was a purebred combat aircraft, even though some of them, like the IAD DL basic trainer, could be armed. Developed in 1946, the IAE 24 Kalkin was the first purebred combat aircraft produced in Argentina in large scale. However, it was patterned after the de Havilland Mosquito rather than an original design. After the Second World War, Argentina hosted some brilliant German and French aeronautical engineers who leveled up its aviation industry. Thus, the country achieved many symbolic successes. Argentina produced the first jet fighter prototype and the first swapping jet fighter in Latin America. FMA also worked on many revolutionary flying machines such as the IAE-34 Kleinantu flying wing sailplane, the IAE-37 supersonic delta wing interceptor, and the IAE-38 Nananfero flying wing cargo transport. However, these projects never reached the mass production levels. Until the IA-58, Argentina had produced only the IAE-46 Rankel utility and the IA-50 Guarani-2 transport aircraft in large numbers. The Pucara symbolized a new level. Unlike the IAE-24 Kalkin, which was patterned after the de Havilland Mosquito, it was an original design. Moreover, differing from the IAE-22 DL basic trainer, which could be armed, the IA-58 was a purebred warrior. Unlike many previous Argentine combat aircraft, it would also be produced in large numbers. With these features, it was a first in Latin America. But why did Argentina continue with a light attack aircraft with turboprop engines instead of advanced jet fighters? Previous indigenous combat aircraft programs, including jet fighter projects, were too challenging for Argentina's economy and industrial capabilities. Moreover, this country did not need a sizable air force and could not compete with the USA, the UK or France in the international market. So the production volume of these two ambitious programs would also be too small. These facts made all these projects economically impractical. On the other hand, the modest and low-cost IA-58 was a more convenient warbird for Argentine security requirements. It was easy to produce and low-cost to operate. Since many countries faced insurgency movements, such aircraft had good market potential. It was a less competitive business area because the USA, the UK and France did not focus on it. A specific Argentine man also played an essential role in IA-58's development. In 1958, the yacht Granma had transported 82 fighters from Mexico to Cuba to overthrow the Batista regime. One of them was Ernesto Che Guevara. After the Cuban Revolution, this Argentine man had begun his journey to ignite a new socialist insurgency movement in Africa and South America. Preparing for the upcoming low-intensity conflicts had become crucial for Argentina. So, in August 1966, the Argentine company Dineva 
began developing a light turboprop attack aircraft designed for counterinsurgency operations and close air support missions. The new aircraft's initial design closely resembled the US OV-10 Bronco. Later, the Argentine engineers adopted a more conservative layout. An unpowered glider was built to test the aerodynamics of the new attack aircraft, which was designated as the AX-02 during its design phase. It made its maiden flight on December 26, 1967, and numerous changes were made based on the trial results. In 1968, the construction of the first powered machine began. At that time, the aircraft was named as the IA-58 Delphin. It made its maiden flight on August 20, 1969. It used Garrett TPE 331 U303 turboprops. However, this engine did not fully satisfy the developers and negotiations began with Pratt & Whitney for the RT-6A. Soon, the French company Turbomica offered its Asuzu 16G specifically modified to meet Argentine requirements. The Argentine engineers adjusted the aircraft design for the new turboprops within 11 months. The second prototype with the Asuzu 16G engines made its maiden flight on September 6, 1970. The result was successful. Therefore, the new aircraft serial production variant, now called IA-58 Pukara, was fitted with the Asuzu 16G. The IA-58 entered the Argentine Air Force service in 1976. Until 1986, when the production ceased, 110 machines were built. The Pukara has a conventional all-metal fuselage construction. The upper nose section can be folded upwards to access the avionics compartment quickly. Many easily removable skin panels facilitate maintenance. The canopy and armored cockpit are resistant to 7.62mm rounds at a distance of up to 150 meters. The inclined nose provides the crew with an excellent view. The two spar wing is made mainly of aluminum alloys. The unswept cantilever wings have 7 degree of dihedral on the outer panels and are fitted with slotted trailing edge flaps. Thanks to its high landing gear, the IA-58 can carry various bomb types under the wing and fuselage. The low pressure tires allow operation from unpaved airfields. The Pukara can take off from 300 meters and requires only a 200 meter runway to land. A water injection system increases thrust during takeoff and an electric anti-icing system is installed on the air intake. The aircraft is highly maneuverable at low altitudes, ensuring attacks on small, well-camouflaged targets and evading anti-aircraft fire. The IA-58 has many non-serial variants. In 1979, Argentina developed the IA-58B Pucara Bravo version, which features improved avionics and two new 30mm DOFA cannons. However, the program was later discontinued. One Pukara, the AX-04 was modified during the Falklands War to enhance its anti-ship capabilities as an urgent solution. However, the outcome was unsatisfactory, so the project was cancelled. After the Falklands War, Argentina began working on the IA-58C Pukara Charlie variant based on combat experiences. It had increased anti-ship and anti-helicopter capabilities. The aircraft's forward cockpit was removed. The IA-58C was fitted with an additional 30mm DOFA cannon to supplement the existing gun armament. It could carry the R-550 Magic air-to-air -air missiles and Martin Pescador air-to-surface missiles. The Pukara Charlie's survivability improved with thicker armor plates and an advanced electronic warfare system suite. Even though the outcome was promising, the project was cancelled in 1988 due to a lack of funding. The IA-66 was equipped with more powerful engines and new four-bladed propellers. Some IA-58As were converted to the IA-58D Pukara Delta featuring new avionics systems and 950 shaft horsepower Pratt & Whitney PT-6A-62 engines. In 2019, after retiring the aircraft from counterinsurgency light strike operations, Argentina converted one Pukara for border surveillance and patrol missions. If the necessary budget is allocated, the Argentine Air Force is expected to operate the new variant called the Pucara Phoenix or the IA-58H Pucara II. At least one aircraft has already been delivered for trials. Many countries, including Bolivia, Brazil, the Central African Republic, Egypt, Iran, Iraq, Mauritania, Morocco, Paraguay, 
Venezuela and Zaire intended to acquire the IA-58. However, only Argentina, Colombia, Sri Lanka and Uruguay became the operators. The Royal Air Force also briefly operated a captured Pucara for test purposes. Except for a single Pucara Phoenix from the Argentine Air Force, all IA-58s were retired. The IA-58 has a two-person crew. It has a length of 14.25 meters, a wingspan of 14.5 meters, a height of 5.36 meters and a wing area of 30.3 square meters. The aircraft's empty and maximum takeoff weights are 4,020 and 6,800 kilograms respectively. Two 978 horsepower Turbamica Asuzu 16G turboprop engines provide a top speed of 500 km per hour. The Pukara has a range of 3,710 km. Its combat radius is 350 km. The IA-58 service ceiling is 10,000 meters, in other words, 33,000 feet. The aircraft has two 20mm Hispano Suiza HS-804 auto cannons, four 7.62mm FN Browning M230 machine guns, and three hardpoints with a 1,620kg weapon capacity. It can carry bombs and rocket pods. In 1976, after having just entered service, the Pukara was used for its intended purpose. The aircraft carried out a series of missile and bomb strikes against communist ERP guerrillas near Tucuman. During the 1982 Falklands War, Argentina deployed 24 aircraft to the Falkland Islands. Their rear ejection seats were removed, additional fuel tanks were installed and the rear cockpit glazing was painted over. Three Pukaras were destroyed at Goose Green Airfield by a cluster bomb dropped from a Sea Harrier. SAS commandos destroyed another six aircraft during a raid. 114mm shells fired from the frigate HMS Arrow hit two IA-58s on the ground. Three Pukaras were shot down by a Stinger manpads, 30mm gunfire of a Sea Harrier and small firearms of British paratroopers. One aircraft was lost in an accident. In return, the Argentine warbirds performed 186 combat sorties conducted many ground attack missions and shut down a scout helicopter. These aircraft could take off and land from constantly bombed airstrips, proving their robustness on many occasions. The IA-58 was not created for such combat scenarios, so it naturally suffered heavy losses. Still, the Brits were impressed with Pukara's performance. The Royal Air Force tested one of 11 captured aircraft in the Boscom Down Test Center. After trials, the UK initiated the Small Agile Battlefield Aircraft Program to develop a light, maneuverable, subsonic frontline fighter that could intercept and destroy enemy helicopters, provide direct support to troops, conduct counter guerrilla operations, conduct aerial reconnaissance, and designate targets. Yet, this project was later terminated. The Colombian Air Force actively used Pucaras in the war against drug trafficking. The Sri Lankan Air Force also operated IA-58s in combat. One aircraft was hit by ground fire but could return to its base. Two Sri Lankan Pukaras were lost, a man pass shot down one, and a premature ordnance detonation accident destroyed the other. After the Falklands War, the UK blocked Argentine defense marketing efforts globally, so many potential buyers abandoned their IA-58 acquisition plans. Also, the Argentine economy which was already struggling with crisis, collapsed. The loss of the war ended the junta regime, which was good news for the Argentine people, but it also brought long-term political instability. All these adverse effects severely damaged the Argentine aerospace and defense industry. Not designed for such conflict, the Pucara inevitably performed poorly in the Falklands War. This gave the aircraft an unfair bad reputation, which was detrimental to its marketing efforts. In a more stable economy and political environment, the IA-58 could reach a broader market and this potential success could have led to further achievements. Like many other Argentine defense programs, which were brilliant initiatives with great potential, the Pucara fell victim to the Falklands War. Still, despite all these unfavorable factors, the aircraft fought gallantly and could find customers in the international market. Therefore, we believe the IA-58 Pucara deserves to be a legend. Thanks for watching our video.
and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.